Allô, 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 allô. E mi ciao, ciao, ciao. Come stai? Are you okay? <laughs> I would say not at my best period, eh? as everybody, I guess. As everybody, I guess, yeah. Mm. Yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, there was a very nice uh, uh, happening, let's say. Maybe you can say something to our friends. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the uh, episode number 20. Ciao, Sebi. Hi, Sebi. <laughs> so yes, uh, two days ago uh, we had uh, under the auspices of the IDS the so-called Demoscopy for Peace, which was um, practically an initiative to uh, first of all to, to loud the voice first of all about what's going on there uh, with this terrible invasion and the nightmare that people in Ukraine are uh, experiencing. Uh, and second, to try to uh, ask for, um, to collect uh, donations, ask for donations from all members, from all, all participants, practically anything they can, yeah. anything they can offer in order to be used, uh, to be given to the Red Cross uh, for purposes to relieve the problems uh, to some extent, of course, to some extent, because I mean, as you see every day that the problem is becoming uh, even worse, worse, worse. So it's really, yeah, it's becoming really serious, I mean, in my view. And very, you know, tough to accept that it's happening <laughs> in our era, uh, such yeah. a brutal, I mean, thing again. Uh, as, we, as we said, uh, let's say we are not used to, to war, at least uh, a good proportion of us is, of course, excluding those from the ex-Yugoslavia and those coming from other continents in which there is something still. But uh, yeah, this is very touchy. Anyway, Emiliuccio, we have a, we have a very nice program for today, right? Uh, we are, uh, let's say, going to show you the question of the week which of course is related to the topic we are, we are going to discuss today. Sebi, can you launch the question of the week? Yes. And the question is the following. Do you feel confident with genital pigmentations? Yes, of course, or no, sometimes. Eh, sometimes it is that's the one you like. Eh? Always I like sometimes, but in this question particularly, I think it's a very nice answer. Yeah. It's a very nice answer. Yes, we will discuss a little bit about uh, genital pigmentations. Eh? Yeah, genital, I would say lesions in general, but uh, mainly, especially, mainly, yeah, yeah. mainly lesions. Yeah. Of the genitalia. We have two, uh, two guests which we, who will uh, become more or less stable in the in the episode. And they are already, they are, uh, they are already, yeah. standard collaborators. They are not yes. guests. Mm. Not guests anymore, you know? Exactly. Yeah, because we say that guests after two, day, two days, they smell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> after two days, a guest is smelling. <laughs> Well, no, they are not guests. They are stable, um, let's say, part of the of the of the team. Okay, sometimes, of course, uh, is the winner. No, is also thirty three percent, which is uh, one out of three of our uh, friends connected. So our aim is to convince. Uh, everybody that more or less today we can increase our level of confidence uh, concerning uh, genital pigmentations because we have a few clues that we can apply knowing a, li uh, a little bit better the uh, the problems related to the area. Looks like we have a lot of work to do eh? or with only 11% yes. feeling confident with yes this. yes yes let's see Let's see how we can start. Let's start. Increase a little bit this number. Yeah. 
so we will start as usually with the paper of the week. Yes. So Sebastiano, please give us. Thank you. Which of this uh, week is, uh, of course, uh, on the topic of genital genital lesions in general. Uh, the paper this week is not from dermatology practical and conception, but anyway, we are sad a little bit, but you know, yeah. Yeah, but so the paper is from the International Journal of Dermatology uh, with the first author and colleague from Lebanon, Ismail Matuk. Uh, we did together a, a very, I like it very much, a nice review on dermoscopy practically for genital uh, lesions, an overview of, uh, of the several lesions that we can see in uh, genital sites and how dermoscopy can help us to recognize them. He, this is the number of lesions that we were able to include in the uh, in the evaluation. And here, uh, we will try to see these lesions in the way that we present Penelope's gift. Ah, see, okay, I like it. I have the panel and we will try together to guess yes. the diagnosis in these nine lesions, which in the majority of them is, yeah. I would say, feasible. Feasible, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, starting, from, so starting from A, uh, this is uh, penile, um, como se dice? Pearly, 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 pearly yeah. Uh, um, uh, Papules. Papules, yeah. Very yeah. good. Okay, let's go to B. Angiokeratoma. Perfect, my friend. Angiokeratoma. Let's go to C. Melanosis. Excellent. Excellent. Melanosis. And we can say it with quite a good degree of confidence, can't we? We will yes. show in a minute why. Uh, so melanosis with a pattern of circles. Yes. Lesion D, could you guess what lesion D? Uh, yes, I can guess, even though it's not easy, but it should be a seborrheic With multiple uh, hairpin and glomerular vessels in a rather regular distribution and also some white keratin masses, which are compatible with seborrheic Very good. Yeah. Lesion E. Nevus is a nevus with a classic globular pattern, which is the most frequent in, um, uh, in this area. And now we move to the mm. malignant group, starting from F, which is, I don't know if yeah. you can guess. Huh? Mm, well, if you say it's malignant, it's a, it's a keira. Keira. It, otherwise, it could be also psoriasis. I mean, I guess you mean that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes, and there, of course, we have an overlap. This is Keira. We do have an overlap between Keira and psoriasis, as we do have an overlap, overlap between Bowens and psoriasis on the trunk. The difference is practically the same as it is on the trunk. So on the trunk, we say that, yes, there is an overlap, but in Bowens, usually, typically, we see larger vessels. We call them coid or glomerular. And also, they are not regularly distributed. They are expected to be either in clusters or in an asymmetric distribution, not so regular as they are in psoriasis. More or less, it's the same also here. Yeah. OK. Then, then, G, then G is, uh, oh. if you say it's Malay, yeah, Bowens. Yeah. Sorry, I, I pressed the button very quickly. So Bowens, uh, brown dots in a linear uh, arrangement. Uh, I would say that for Bowens or Bowenoid papulosis, anyhow, the criteria work better on genital sites as compared to the trunk for pigmented Bowens. Definitely. Uh, so it's really clear cut. This pattern of dots, uh, usually right. in, a linear, in a linear fashion, much more clear on genital areas. Then, what about age? Well, age is a, again a red lesion, uh, differential diagnosis, including inflammatory conditions or Kira as well. Keira as well, or here, since we see also some areas with yeah. micro ulcerations, we cannot exclude the possibility ah. of, uh, there are some micro ulcerations in some parts of the lesion, therefore we cannot exclude the possibility of yeah. not only in situ, but yeah. invasive squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah. Ulceration is maybe the most, uh, the most important clue for invasive squamous cell. And finally, the last one is the very bad guy, yeah. Melanoma uh, typified by white, gray, uh, 
uh, and a shade of blue color. These are the important clues for melanoma. I have, uh, however, more for you, but we have to go quicker. Uh huh. Okay. So, A. Uh, A. Uh, well, A. Uh, Orange color linear vessels. Yeah. So uh, it's not a BCC, it's a zoom. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, B? B. No idea. Psoriasis. Uh, of course. Yeah. Okay. C. Lichen. Lichen. Black. Lichen. Very yeah. good. B is not a, maybe a perfect example because uh, you cannot see very well the periphery in which there is a, an intense white color and on the background of an intense white color, the, there is a raw deteria. This is a lichen sclerosis. Okay. Erosion uh, in this particular example. Yeah. Wart. Quite easy. Genital yeah. wart. F Molluscum. is very easy. Molluscum. G is a, a candida. With this cottage hey, cheese, our friend. you like the cottage cheese like my <laughs> Yes. Oh, this is the official name. Yes, the official name, yeah. H is our friend, you know. And I also. I also is our Look friend. At Look at the guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the skier, skier. <laughs> and I is scabies. I is, of course, scabies. Very good. And finally, this is... Uh, 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 I don't know if you will like it. I don't know if you know it. An algorithm that we proposed for pigmented lesions on genitalia. So we say that if you see blue, white, or gray color, then this is, the lesion is suspicious for melanoma. Mm -hmm. If you don't see blue, white, or gray color, but you see only brown or brown and black, then uh, we have to assess the dermatoscopic pattern. If the pattern is a pattern of lines or circles, then the diagnosis is melanosis. If uh, it's a structureless pattern, then we don't have a clear diagnosis and we should follow up. If yeah. it's a pattern of globules, then young age and stable lesion nevus, uh, suspicions, um, uh, if not, if it's uh, if it's not a stable lesion and the age is not a child, then suspicious for Bowen's disease. And if we can yeah. see some examples, so this is the first one, uh, dermoscopy reveals white color and gray color, therefore this is enough to say suspicious for melanoma. Yeah. Uh, the next one, we see a multifocal lesion, a pattern of circles, therefore it's not suspicious for melanoma and it is a, 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 a pattern compatible with melanosis. Mm -hmm. Next one, a lesion with a pattern of globules. The age is young, the lesion is stable, therefore nevus. And finally, a lesion with a pattern of globules again, but in a different clinical context, which means Bowen's uh, disease or Bowenoid papillosis. Finally, in this case that we see uh, a dark lesion with uh, no blue color, no gray color, but structureless black or structureless brown, then this is the scenario in which uh, maybe follow-up is the best option. So do you like this uh, multi-step approach? I love it. I love it. <laughs> very nice, very nice. But let me conclude. Let me conclude your uh, your uh, uh, way of seeing these things with a little bit of. Uh, so you know what? I I'm not a guy for algorithms. I'm a guy from for uh, of clues. Eh? So I have to remember a, a number, only a number. And not too much, you know, this stuff, you know, if it's this, go the year, if it's there, go there. So I always try to remember number. And in, in the case of mucosal pigmented lesions, I have to remember the number of three. Eh? Three. Three clues which I use to feel confident in terms of uh, uh, differential diagnosis of these uh, genital pigmentations. So first... Number, number one, clinical criteria do not apply for mucosal lesions. They are all very ugly from a clinical point of view. Benign melanosis are very ugly. Eh? Look at this. This is a, a, a benign melanosis, and this is asymmetric, eh? is completely crazy. You know, If this lesion is located on, on the skin, you have to judge it as a melanoma. But since it's located in the genital area, you forget it eh? and you are, you're not getting nervous 
because the lesion is ugly looking. Okay, so this is number one. This is number two, the two clinical criteria that we have to use to differentiate benign melanosis from melanoma is the age and the palpability. Huh? So age is very important. Uh, in this particular context, we know very well that the mean age of melanoma in the vulva region is 65 years. Huh? So if we see a 25-year-old girl, most probably this is a benign lesion. If we see a 65, 70-year-old lady, then we have to look carefully, okay? And second clue, uh, the great majority uh, of melanomas of this area are palpable. Mm -hmm. Because look at this, uh, this uh, uh, paper, which is, which is reported a very huge amount of vulvar and vaginal melanomas, uh, more than 70% uh, of melanomas are um, showing up with a thickness which is greater than one millimeter at the moment of the diagnosis, of the excision of the primary tumor. And of course, a melanoma which is thicker than one millimeter is definitely palpable from a clinical point of view, okay? So this is uh, most probably benign because it's flat, while melanoma is very, very often looking like this, like a nodule. Of course, there is also a flat part, but uh, in the great majority of cases, you, you will have a palpable area of the melanoma. And clue number three, which is completing the, the game, is dermoscopy. If you see parallel lines, then you, are, you can be pretty sure, parallel line or pattern of circles, you can be pretty sure you are dealing with a benign melanosis. You see, this is the same lesion I showed you before, and here you see clearly a, a parallel line, parallel lines. So, it's a flat lesion. There are parallel lines. We can be on the safe side. This is a genital melanosis. Huh? Uh, look at other examples. You know, uh, Parallel lines are the most frequent benign features we can see demoscopically, but also the pattern of circles is very often vis vis uh, visible. Uh, again, parallel lines, parallel lines, pattern of circles, especially on the left side of this lesion. Okay, look at how ugly is this, this uh, yeah. clinical presentation. It's obviously ugly, eh? but we have to forget this clue number one. Then we have to look for the clinical, uh, the two clinical criteria. Is there palpability? Not really. Uh, what about the age? She's a, a, def, a, a quite young uh, lady. So we are still on the safe side from a clinical point of view. But again, if, we look, if you look demoscopically at the lesion, then you see the parallel lines, you put everything together, and you can be confidently diagnosing a genital melanosis. Debbie, do you think that the multifocal presentation is a guarantee that it's not a melanoma? It's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. It is much more frequently seen in benign melanosis, but it's not a guarantee. Yeah. So yeah. It, the, we could have a um, somehow multifocal... Multifocal melanoma, yeah. Yeah. Melanoma. yeah. That's it, yeah. So in, in my view, this is the way we can increase our, our confidence uh, in this particular region. Great. Uh, there is a question concerning the treatment of genital bowens. And there is also a request to show the algorithm again. You see, they like the algorithm. <laughs> uh, in the meanwhile, would you like to respond, which is the best uh, treatment? Of course, balance? of course, we try first with uh, non-surgical uh, procedures like imiquimod, uh, like uh, cryotherapy. Of course, if it's not a small lesion, cryo is not really um, um, uh, the key. As, as a solitary tre treatment, maybe not, but combined with imiquimod, it could be a good solution. Great. So the algorithm, once again, is here. So it says that blue, white, and gray color are suspicious because we saw that in all these lesions that I showed and Jebby showed of melanosis or nevi, the color was always brown or black. Uh, so blue, gray, white are anyhow suspicious. And then if the color is brown or black, then lines or circles 
point towards melanosis, globule point towards nevi or Bowen's disease, depending on the clinical context. And structureless is the less specific pattern. So living with a structureless pattern could be anything and therefore a uh, follow-up would be recommended. That's more or less the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Very well, nice. Wow. It's not safer to do a biopsy of this melanosis instead of being super confident. JP, there is a question. Okay, it's not safer to do a biopsy. Of course, we can always do a biopsy, uh, but this is the same as we, uh, the same logic we apply for the rest of the body. If I'm if I'm sure that uh, a patient is showing me a nevus here, and I'm sure I don't buy I don't biopsy it. You know what I mean? So it depends from the from the confidence you are, you have. If you are uh, confident, then you don't biopsy. If you are not confident, then you biopsy. Uh, so that's it. It's very, it's very simple. And this changes definitely only with, with experience. Remember, I mean, 10, 10 years ago, or even maybe less than 10 years ago, almost always we, in facial lesions, we concluded that you need to biopsy. But today it's not anymore the case. I mean, in many of them, not in all, but in many of them, we feel quite confident with, uh, with the demoscopy and we don't need to biopsy. So more or less, it's always the same. Uh, 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 there is also what, what you call parallel lines looks like negative network. Let's see again. Let's see again a couple of examples uh, because this is, in my view, extremely important to uh, uh, to you know what I mean. Uh, of course, I mean negative network is the let's say it depends from the side you see the the criterion. Uh, usually, I'm more prone to be attracted by the pigmentation, and that's why I. I call it parallel lines. You know, you see here, for example, there is uh, parallel and reticulated lines. You know, of course, uh, if you if in in re, in in, in retro in reverse, you can see, especially at the up, upper part of this lesion, that these globules are, um, let's say, separated by a kind of uh, non-pigmented. Uh, reticulation, and that's why I agree. You can also call it negative network. But in my view, what is jumping into my eye, for example, in this case, are the parallel lines, you know? And let's see another couple of examples. Yeah, for example, so here, parallel lines, uh, they look like the these fingerprints that we usually uh, describe for uh, solar lentigos. Of uh, here the it's quite evident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is the therapy in Zoom balanitis? Uh, first of all, you have to convince them to clean them a little bit better. <laughs> they have to wash uh, twice a day. And then uh, um, we can try first with uh, uh, topical steroids. Uh, also cryo can be used sometimes. Um, but, you know, that's it, basically. What do you use, Emilio? Yeah, yeah, the same, the same. Steroids. Yeah. Uh, do you perform follow-up in genital melanosis? Yeah, of course, yes. I mean, in case, why not? Uh, we take a photograph, we, we do follow-up. It's not uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. In which intervals? Well, there are not uh, defined standardized intervals that you should follow, but I would say uh, in regular intervals of maybe six months the first time, and then in one year, once again, uh, but there is not something standard that a standard protocol of follow up that mm. you need to follow. The point is that for genital melanosis, usually we do the baseline visit, usually is uh, quite informative because the patterns are quite characteristic. The lines and the circles are quite characteristic. And also, in my view, this multifocal is a very extremely strong clue. I mean, it increases significantly the probability of, of, um, of melanosis. Mm -hmm. uh, the multifocal distribution. Uh, why don't you propose laser uh, carbon dioxide treatment, resurfacing to treat benign melanotic lesions? Uh, benign melanotic now meaning uh, meaning melanosis. Uh, if we if we mean melanosis, then there is no no need to treat it. Uh, if we 
uh, if, we, if we are referring to the previous discussion about Bowen's, then of course, laser is one of the, or Bowenoid papillosis, then of course, laser is definitely one of the recommended treatments. Is melanoma in the genital region always palpable? No, not always, not always. 70% um, of the cases are thicker than one millimeter. So it's, it's very probable that they are palpable, but still one out of three melanomas in this area is not palpable, but dermoscopically, they will show up with this blue white structureless blue color white. with no parallel lines, no pattern, no pattern of circles. And that's the, the secret. That's why we need these three clues, you know? Uh, in order to, to feel more confident. Yeah, uh, but that's a good point, however, because what we what you mentioned, that the majority of mucosal melanomas are nodular, of course, is related to the fact that until today, I mean, in the last decades, uh, melanomas were diagnosed quite late. Obviously, Obviously. melanomas uh, do not begin as nodules. Pro very probably, they begin as flat melanomas, and eventually they become yeah. a nodular component. Uh, there is another comment. I had a patient with a round flat lesion showing a pattern of brown globules on the periphery and bluish in the center. I was surprised by the pathologic result. Benign fibrous istiocytoma, so dermatofibroma, meaning. Wow. Wow, yes. Like, wow. This is exceptional in this area. I never saw one. Yeah. Good. Nice. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, do you see and ah, there are more uh, ah, yeah. blue gray blue gray with clear parallel lines uh, that would be yes 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 still if you see parallel lines if even if uh, you see a little bit of blue color gray color but within this area of blue gray color you see the lines then still most probably this is a benign lesion yeah and what what about oral lesion? Ah, sorry. Yeah, it wouldn't be so frequent. I mean, the vast majority of melanosis yeah. don't show white, white yeah. uh, blue color. What about oral? Same oral. criteria? Yes, more or less, same criteria. Uh, if we speak about oral, uh, I mean, there is not too much experience. If you speak, if we speak about lips, then yes. Ah, lips, I mean lips. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lips, same criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any idea about the long-term evolution of this genital melanosis? Uh, no idea, no idea, no idea. Probably they are going to disappear after a while, but... Well, right. Yeah, I mean, to, to the experience that we have is variable uh, course. So some of them remain really stable. Some of them might even increase in size. Some others might, dis of course, not with a dramatic rate, of, uh, for sure. Yeah. Some others will uh, disappear. Uh, is there a possibility of a benign, palpable, solitary lesion in a young girl, benign, palpable, uh, showing only gray and brown clods and lines, but growing fast, few months? Is there a chance for intradermal nevus in the genital area? Uh, well, I, I very, very rarely saw uh, uh, intradermal nevi in these areas. Uh, don't you think so, Emilio? So probably nevi, generally speaking, they are going to uh, disappear after a while. Yeah, but even an intraderm a classic intradermal nevus, why should it be so fast growing? Um, yeah. Anyhow, of course, always there are exceptions, exceptional cases of uh, unusual things, but it's uh, for sure not something very frequent. Yeah. Uh, Tarcolibus may be used for yeah. Zoom. Yes, of course, yes. Acrolimus, forever. Acrolimus can be used in anything. Steroids are also used. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> A melanoma, melanoma of the genitals, which pattern? Eh, uh, the same as in the rest of the body. Uh, irregular vessels, uh, pink color. We suppose. Well, yeah. But we have a couple of cases, not many, uh, but uh, more or less, yeah, same stuff. Basal cell carcinoma, is it common on the genitalia? No, 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 no. No, but... The, but it could happen. It could, it could happen. happen. It's not yeah. like, because there are follicular, uh, 
there are hair follicles. It's not like the sites. And uh, finally, what about Kaposi sarcoma oral lesions? Mm. Yeah. The, the, my problem with the oral lesion, so into the cavity, in the, in the oral cavity, is the fact that we cannot use any instruments to uh, approach the lesion. So still the, the, uh, the examination is only clinical. And, uh, and we have a couple of uh, possibilities. We have still melanosis. We, have, we can have blue nevi. We can have um, uh, this kind of amalgama tattoos. We can have kaposi. Uh, and of course, melanoma, which is extremely rare, by the way. Yeah, but I guess Kaposi sarcoma uh, should um, the main differential should be rather angio uh, angiomas, angiogeratomas, or something like this. Uh, theoretically, the, the the pattern should be the one we know. So the the colors of a vascular tumor, which are purple, definitely combined with other, other hues of, of purple color, which uh, create this rainbow pattern. So purple, but also a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. Um, this should be the pattern of Kaposi sarcoma also on, um, on this location. Uh, okay, I think that we got, we took all the questions, my all friend. All the questions, yes. Allora, Emilio, should we go... Uh... There was another one. No, maybe we should answer it. Which is your favorite method of, of biopsy in genitalia when you are not sure or when you are... Uh, yeah, when you think the lesion is suspicious? Punch or is incisional or excisional? Punch is, is okay. Punch is okay. Punch. Okay. So the, this is one more example in which partial biopsies, including punch, are indicated because... Our differential diagnosis usually is between melanoma and melanosis, so a non-melanocytic tumor. So therefore, punch biopsies are meaningful. Um, okay, pigmentation on the tongue, difficult diagnosis on the tongue. Yes, uh, can you recall any pigment, any pigmented lesion on the tongue? Well, a couple of times, uh, angiokeratoma, uh, we yes. had, we had uh, a blue nevus. Mm. I don't know in, in dark skin if it could be more frequent uh, pigmentation on the tongue, but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I cannot recall, I mean, almost any case. Yeah. On the lips, of course, yes, many. Yeah. 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 Very good. Okay. Hey, so. Hey, hey. Emilio. What's next? Okay, should we go with uh, with Nisa and Constantino? Should we should we welcome them? Nisa, ciao. Hi. Hi, hi. Nisa. Hi, JP. Hi, Emilio. <laughs> nice ciao. to see you. Nice and to hello. See you. Hello, Costas. Hello, hello. I see, Costas, you are much less elegant than the, the day before yesterday. <laughs> it's, a, it's a happy hour, man. What do you happy expect? Hour. It's the happy <laughs> hour. It's the happy hour. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Okay. Oh, we start, start with eudermoscopy because I saw that Sebastiano launched the, uh, the photograph of eudermoscopy. Let us see it. Let us see it once again. It's a very nice photo. Bravo, Sebastiano. Ah, Bravo, ah, Sebastiano. Ah, ah, bello. Che bello. Okay. So, Gustavino, what do you have for us? So, uh, I actually have uh, uh, two lesions. Uh, one is uh, from Eudermoscopy that I uploaded earlier this evening uh, because it was a lesion that actually troubled me. And I uploaded it in Eudermoscopy Live because I want the opinion of colleagues and now of world-renowned experts. Nisa, please join. Uh, and the other one is uh, a BCC on the genitalia that we just discussed. And I was surprised. And I, I just looked into my archive and found it. So give me a sec. Here we go. Uh, this is the first lesion uh, on the genitalia. Uh, ugly looking for sure. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, what do you think? Well, it's a it's a definitely a nodular lesion. 
uh, with structureless pigmentation, as you can see here. So definitely it's a lesion that, uh, that it should be biopsied. Now, the question is, is this melanoma or BCC? Because uh, it's, it's in the uh, area of the, of, the, of the skin, right? It's not uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the mucosal area, right? Yes, it's on the skin. Yeah. So main differential melanoma versus BCC, what do you think, guys? Yeah, yeah. Mira? Yeah. It uh, looks like basal cell carcinoma more to me um, because okay. I see some um, brown clots at the periphery. So I vote for BCC. Yeah. Amazing. It was the first BCC on the genitalia that I ever had, actually. Yeah. And the second one that I uploaded on Eudermoscopy, you can see my screen, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. So this is a nine year old girl that has had this lesion per parents uh, since the age of two, but lately it has started growing very fast. This is the clinical, and this is the dermoscopy. And I actually want your advice. So yes, it is a lesion that has been since it was two years old, the girl, but it has been growing per parents. And you can see that biologically, have some activity. Yeah. Yeah. Continue your strategy. Yeah. Is the girl nine nine years of age? Costas? Costas, your connection is not perfect. But with this hair, uh, she doesn't look like nine years old, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but okay. if, it, if it's true that, that she's nine, definitely this could be a, a kind of uh, congenital nevus with uh, structureless pigmentation. There are some globules at the periphery. Yeah. So this is the most uh, probable diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. So structureless pigmentation with globules at the periphery yeah. is not something uh, in a child, is not something. Uh, yeah. Here we are. Uh, you, you lost your connection. My intern is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, 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 we can imagine. But we were wondering the age, you said that the age is nine years old? Yes, nine years old. It has been present since the age of two, but recently it has been growing more actively. Yeah, okay. So we all agreed that if the age is indeed nine years old, because we were somehow uh, uh, impressed by the, the, the hairs that, uh, that are yes, there. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, okay. If the age is indeed nine years old, then, uh, okay, structureless pigmentation in the center, globules at the periphery, it's a, it, it's a natural phenomenon for a nevus, uh, maybe congenital type uh, nevus uh -huh. that is uh, yeah, growing a little bit, but nothing to worry about. Do you, did you worry? Uh, I, I did not worry enough to biopsy. I worried enough to order a three-month follow-up. Sure. Very good. And as expected, the audience so far agrees with you 100%. It's oh. the nevus. But still, it, it had me worry enough to, or, to, to have you come back in three months. Very nice. Thank Absolutely. Great, we thank you very much. It is very nice because you uploaded the case, uh, let's say, uh, today, today at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. and you got already yes. six answers. Nice, yeah, yes. yeah, good. That, that's the magic of eudermoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can get answers also at real time while you are doing the consultation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just call it, I just call Emilia Lalas and Zephyr <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice case. And now, Sebastiano, show us where are we going now, Sebastiano? Please show us. Show us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dermatoscopy Facebook group. We have Nisa that selected uh, the case that she liked most from the last week, Nisa. Yeah, uh, here it is. And my case, uh, she's 69 years old and 
she's a relative of, of mine, very close relative. And when she showed me the lesion, because uh, she was saying that I have a vulvar pruritus, and uh, when I said that, please show me, uh, she was shy and she didn't show me uh, the lesion for the last six years, for, for the last six months. And finally, she decided to show me the lesion. And when I first looked at the lesion with the naked eye, I was shocked because there was a pigmented flat lesion and there was a mildly elevated part here. This part was popular. And I saw some flat pigmented lesions uh, on the inner side. Here is a uh, labium majus and the inner side, not, uh, glabrous skin. There was no hair in this part. And I thought that this could be a melanoma and these are in transit metastasis. How old is she? How old is she? Uh, she is 69 years old. Yeah. 69, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I invited her to the hospital and looked at with the dermatoscopy. And here is the dermatoscopy. Uh, yeah. Ooh. And what do you think? Wow. Some dotted vessels and linear vessels here some radial lines and blue gray structureless areas pink white color <laughs> yes but it's a very chaotic vision yeah 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 let's have a look at the flat pigmented ones and yes yes there are all these and with these findings what do you think this can be well, I'm more on the side, of course, melanoma, you cannot, uh, you cannot exclude it, but also BCC. Sep K, wow, this, uh, if, it, if this is a Sep K, it's a, it's a super Sep K. <laughs> Bowens, mah. I would put melanoma and BCC on the first places. What do you think? Uh, sorry, I was just preparing the, the case of the audience for... Uh... Immediately after. What, so, what did you select so that I select something else? <laughs> uh, I'm voting for melanoma and BCC. No, two votes. Come on. No, you have on. to select one. <laughs> uh, I have to select one. Uh, then uh, BCC. Uh, BCC would be mine. What do you think, Constantinos? He has gone, I think. He okay. has gone. I'm here, I'm here. My internet failed me again. So tell me again the question. Diagnosis, uh, selected diagnosis. Select diagnosis. This is level skin, uh, inner side of the labium maj majus, and you see there is no hair yeah. around. Mm. So, uh, it's a very difficult one. <laughs> um, if I have to guess, because it's unilateral and within transit, I would go with pigmented Pazette's disease. A rare uh, one? Nice, nice option. Ah, budget. Ah. Yeah, a pigmented Pazette's. It's, it's uh, unilateral. Yeah. Okay, and Lisa, tell us, Ned, tell us how you pronounce budget. Page. Page. You see? Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> now let's see the histopathology. Okay. Uh, uh, when I asked uh, show us with the comments. Uh, yes, show us the comments. Sorry, sorry. I forgot uh, to add the uh, comments of the audience uh, from the dermatoscopy side, and uh, most of them, almost seventy percent, uh, thought that this is a melanoma, and thirty percent uh, consider basal cell carcinoma in their differential diagnosis. And here are some answers uh, from the Facebook dermatoscopy site. And here is the. Oh, BCC. Oh, BCC. Yeah. And it's basal cell carcinoma, and this part is mucosal melanosis. So I was uh, very relieved uh, with the results and hugged my relative uh, because uh, I was, when the patient is your relative, you always think ah. about the worst things. Of course. So we all uh, were relieved with the diagnosis. But what about the satellites? Were all BCC? <laughs> Islands or what? They are mucosal melanosis, JP. Ah, I see. It. So the islands were melanosis. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very nice case. Very nice case. Wonderful. With a happy end. <laughs> yeah, with that. <laughs> Thank you, Nisa. Very oh, thank you. Very good, very good. Very nice, very, very nice. Thank you, Nisa, very much. Thank you, thank you. I thank you.
Wonderful. So next okay. week we we uh, we will be all together here again for the like, dermatoscopy Facebook case and the Udermoscopy case. But now there are still a couple of things to do. First is to show some cases that the, our participants, our attendees, uh, sent us. And always we begin this section with what? Say? Penelope. <clears throat> Penelope. Bye, Penelope bye, bye. Gift, our sweet Penelope, our artist, our artist. So today she prepared for us a collision tumors challenge because the topic ah, the previous week was collision tumors. So here, let's see what fish you can catch. Uh, do you have this expression, what fish you can catch? Uh, uh, what fish you can catch, yeah. <laughs> so oh. let's try. So, well, one, I see a BCC, but I don't see another one. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know by definition that there is another one, so you yeah. have to select. <laughs> Why did well, you select the seborrheic keratosis? Seborrheic keratosis. Yeah, yeah. seborrheic keratosis. Yeah. Okay, confirm. Okay. Number two. Number two, uh, uh, cherry and jaw and nevus. Number three. Number three, sepk and uh, dermal nevus. Dermal nevus. Okay. Uh, number four, nice. Looks uh, so nice. clear cell acantoma and sepk. I think so. Number five. Uh, number five, BCC and SEPK. But this is really one on the other. Yeah, this is what, 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 this is, they, are, they, are, they are having sex. They are having sex. <laughs> Dead. Dead. And number We're six. <laughs> number six. Uh, wow. Number six is extremely difficult. I would say again mm. BCC, but uh, BCC and Solar Lentigo. Sepke yeah. maybe. Yeah, or Sepke again. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Should we open the envelope? Yes. Let's, Let's open go. the envelope. So, nodular BCC plus dermal nevus. Ah, I see. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Number two, angioma with nevus, correct. Number three, seborrheic keratosis with nevus, correct. Number four, clear cell acathoma with seborrheic keratosis. Number five, seborrheic keratosis with pinkus. Wow, this is beautiful. Let's remind that Pincus is a variation of, a, it's a special variant of a BCC with fibrosis. Okay. And finally, nodular basal cell carcinoma plus seborrheic keratosis was lesion number six. So thank you, Penelope, very, 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 very much. Thank you. Again, remember to send, it, and send us your case at dermoscopyhappyhour at gmail.com. And let's see now a few uh, cases sent by you. Uh, so, Wow, uh, quite a lot of text. Um, 60 years old female with a large multicolored patch on the left cheek. Uh, 2007 cryotherapy diagnosis of borreic keratosis. Recurrence started in two years, 2009. Biopsy solar lentigo without atypical features. Complete surgical removal was recommended and performed. Histology lentigo maligna. Then it started to reappear above the scar gradually from 2015 until its current state. I cannot see any sign of the malignant with the endoscopy. Am I right? Based on the medical history, it's highly likely a malignant melanoma. Too big for surgery with one safe, uh, safety margin. Imikuimod, it can be too inconvenient for here. Wait and see what is the best approach. So here we are. Uh, okay, that's the usual stuff. That's the usual stuff. A very tiny um, melanoma in situ, which is becoming very large because, of course, the diagnosis could be very challenging from an histopathology point of view. But this is definitely lentigo maligna, don't you think so? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, absolutely. And, and and in this case, I mean, she's too young to be what? to be waiting and seeing, and uh, therefore, I mean, what do you, what do you would you propose in terms of management? The age is sixty six. Removal of what you can see and in Mickey mode afterwards. Conservative removal. So yes. conservative removal. So just try to, to try to get clinically healthy margins. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then in Mickey mode as an adjuvant. Do you agree, guys, with this management? Yeah. I, it, it really I did, I it, it has amazing results. I agree with the treatment. <laughs> I do I did most surgery and in Mickey mode on the margins. Most. Yeah. 
Uh, you mean stage margin, slow motion, you mean, not stage, 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 stage margin uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. Stage margin excisions is uh, the superior uh, I mean, uh, method you can use. But uh, in my view, even with the, these conservative narrow excisions and dungeon and equipment, usually the results are exceptional. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty good. <clears throat> Landing facts. Uh, ah, yeah, here is a request. If we can do the, the, the most could be happy hour earlier at six. My dear friend, the, uh, if you remember, we started at six and then we, we changed the time because of multiple requests by the participants to change the time one hour later. Uh, so that's why uh, we started seven so that we can enjoy the cultural events in Berlin at the evening beginning at eight. Okay, so once we have to all to come to Berlin and enjoy the cultural <laughs> events. <laughs> So I think that unfortunately not because most of you requested it to be at seven o'clock Central European time. Then, uh, Mez Fouad, i uh, like to show you 60, 66 again years old May, who has this fair symptomatic lesion on the left upper eyelid recently. I guess this is the, the one. This okay. is the case uh, here. Maybe we, ah, okay. We have an, a nice photo, which helps us very much to say okay. that this must be a seborrheic keratosis. Uh, it's traumatized with the game. <clears throat> with media like seeds, with helping vessels, so everything looks uh, compatible with several keratosis. Then, Moises. Um, Chida. Huh? The, she's Turkish, Chida. <laughs> Chida. 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 Uh, Chida. Hello, thank I you so much for amazing now. happy hour. I'm so impressed with the Dermoscopy Excellence Digital Training. Ah, really? Thank you. Uh, that's a 33 year old female without medical. Uh, antecedent lesion on the left supraclavicular lesion for eight months uh, reported there was not any similar lesions elsewhere with those herping vessels I suspect keratoacathoma I did a shave biopsy and it turned out to be a tiny keratoacathoma still I cannot understand why ah why it did not grow ah yeah 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 so nice look look what a beautiful ah. photograph and also, <laughs> wow, this is so sweet. <laughs> and it becomes even sweeter. Look, yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a baby keratoacanthoma. <laughs> quite fine. productive. Quite productive. Yes, quite productive. I would say, I mean, unreliable story history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think that all keratoacanthomas grow quickly? All of them. Well, because I mean, history is always a little bit, you know. Yeah. Yeah, history cannot be relied on always. <laughs> then, okay, good question. Yeah. Good question. Keratocon Thomas. You're sure it's a Keratocon Thomas? How do you treat? No, you cannot be sure. Ever. Because, I don't, I don't yeah, yes, that's the point. So there is no other no other way uh, to go than removing it. No, no question. But I would complete again, conservative. Conservative, exactly. So you can make also a shave biopsy shave. here. And if you remove the entire lesion and the pathologist is writing on the report, keratocantoma, then you can stop. But very often they write uh, well-differentiated squam cell carcinoma. Yes, it's a problem. Yeah. 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 And sometimes yeah, the, the the features. Like carcinoma. Sorry? Uh, and sometimes in the pathology report, they say keratoacantoma likes squamous carcinoma. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Let's repeat again the concept. In my view, these are two entities. Eh? I strongly believe that keratoacantoma has an identity, an identity, you know, because uh, a keratoacantoma is going to disappear. A squamous cell carcinoma is not going to disappear. So there are two entities, but they are very similar from a from an histopathologic point of view sometimes. Therefore, it's very difficult to I remember, I remember that you said in the in the in the previous episode, keratoacanthoma has the right to exist. Keratoacanthoma <laughs> <laughs> has the right to have its own identity. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, Sid, 
50 man year old lady, growing lesion right cheek for one year, uh, differential diagnosis as usual, a dico malignant versus LPLK. Can we be sure about the differential here, guys? Okay, Th there are clues for LPLK. Are they enough to make us feel confident? Uh, not completely, so at least uh, we have to make a follow-up, at mm. least. I, I agree, but the clues are quite strong. Orange mm -hmm. color, uh, uh, like uh, the, the peppering is coarse and fine. I think that we have enough clues to not perform a biopsy straight ahead. Yeah. You know what? You know what I'm doing from time to time in this, uh, sometimes in these cases? A treatment with Mickey Mod, because then you solve the problem uh, because she wants this lesion removed for cosmetic reasons. And mm -hmm. therefore, why not instead of spraying with a cryo and uh, or making so first a biopsy and then a cryo or an emiki mode and then. But tell me something. If it disappears with emiki mode, which is the conclusion? What was it? Both lesions are can 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 disappear with with emiki mode. So at least you <laughs> don't arm. <laughs> don't arm. <laughs> but if it comes back, you know it's a melanoma. <laughs> Very cute dog. Very cute. Yeah. And I think this is the last one. Giovanni. 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 Ciao, Giovanni. Giovanni. Giovanni is my friend from Genova. Giovanni is sending us two very nice uh, <clears throat> collision tumors between a nevus and the basal carcinoma. This is the first, and he says that uh, when there is nevus and basalioma, then basalioma, which is our favorite tumor. Uh, Wait. wins and that's true <laughs> uh, so this is the first example with the nevus embracing embracing yeah. a BCC yeah uh, one more again this congenital is congenital nevus congenital. this is exceptional look at this yeah so rare so congenital rare. nevus with a basal cell carcinoma yeah. well actually the, the, the BCC is this Destroying the nevus, you see? Yeah. <laughs> invading, invading the nevus, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very strange. Excellent, very good. So, time for very our nice cases. cases. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. to all of you who send us your cases. Continue sending um, uh, the cases that you like or you think that they have a nice didactic message. And uh, Sebastiano, are you going to show us uh, Something concerning the Kahoot, or we just go uh, to play. So, do we have a prize, JP? Yes, of course, we have a prize. Uh, as we announced uh, the last time, we will have the prize uh, going on for the next uh, uh, six episodes. Uh, so, in total, uh, six episodes. Therefore, uh, we will have a prize. And the prize is Emilio. I don't know if Sebastian is going to show what is the prize. That's why I'm not saying, but uh, probably yes. Hello, Emilio. Hello, JP. Welcome to the Dermoscopy Excellence Digital Training. Let's start from the clinical. Are you ready for the scalp? Some data highlighting a significantly worse survival for acral melanoma. Here, again, you make the diagnosis because of the arborizing vessels, sharply in focus. So this is our destiny, my friends. If someone is connecting right now, yes. then they are saying, okay, let's stop seeing this stupid <laughs> course. <laughs> but then, if you look at the tables and you see, you see the reason why. Melanoma on the face is a lazy guy, morphologically, dermatoscopically. <laughs> Bravo, my president. Eh? <laughs> Very good. Digital training. What is this, Emilio? Just briefly. Say, 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 Jeffy, say. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a complete digital, uh, digital demoscopy course that you can uh, follow at home and ten modules. Uh, from uh, zero to hero, right? This is the, the motto. <laughs> okay. There are wins for free this uh, digital course, which is a nice gift in my view, nice prize. Prize, it's not a gift, it's a prize to the one that uh, will win our usual Kahoot competition, which starts in a moment. 
So we are waiting for players to join. The I pin think. is 2803550. Look at this. Wow. Very good. You see? Yeah. Of course, as usually, I, I have the impression, Emilio, that uh, the best part of our uh, happy hour is the Kahoot session, right? I mean, this is the most uh, catchy. I like every single part of the happy hour, <laughs> and especially now with Misa and Constantino, so I yeah. also like you know, this. Uh... Yes, no, definitely. We, we, uh, we need, we need um, really to... Um, uh to to continue this way because you see that today we were very relaxed you know not uh going to, uh you know it being stressed by the time going fast so everything is much easier with uh, nisa and, and costas absolutely so are we ready to start i think we are uh, yes let's do our countdown Let okay Wow. So five cases from the last week, right? Last week. Starting from Monday. This is the Monday case. This ah. is the clinical uh, image. Okay. It follows. Ah. And now take a look at the details. Sometimes the details have, have some hidden information that is really, you know. Uh, yes, but the, the... tell me if this is, in your opinion, a, congenital nevus, acquired nevus, Spitz nevus, or melanoma? Uh, beautiful, huh? It's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. So the details are important, but only when we don't know what it is. If we know what it is, don't look at the lesion too much, because then the stress will grow, and then you can change your mind. <laughs> yes, congenital nevus. Nice. I'm done, I'm done. Very nice. Okay, not so easy, oh, uh, but the majority uh, found the correct answer. Very good. So we have Kesia leading Kesia. Kesia has Kesia. three times. I mean, I mean, we should say, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also it's nice because if uh, if the same person is winning two prizes, maybe she can sell. The second one. <laughs> sell. She can donate. Really or, or sell. I mean, but okay, sell would be nice. <laughs> okay. Tuesday. You see that it is an eruption. Ah. And I also can give you an additional information, which is that there was intense pruritus. Okay. 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 Got it. You got it. Let's see if you got it. And here are the options. Like in planus, folliculitis, scabies, Grover's disease. Uh -huh. You know yeah. that it's very, uh, 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 it's, it's a, a quite a long time that I didn't see a case like this uh, in my clinic. Really? Yeah. Is it, is it stellate at the right end? Uh, yes. Grover, yeah. Stellate ulceration of uh, Grover's disease. Let's show it for a moment. What, what yeah. we, speak, we speak about this ulcerative area exactly. in the center of the papule, which has this kind of projections at the periphery. This is the stellate uh, ulceration of, of Grover's disease. Very nice. This was the Tuesday yeah. case. Uh, LEC. LEC. On the top. And actually, as a useful clue, you can uh, find it in solitary... In uh, 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 exactly, exactly. So, men 70 years old with a pruritic lesion, no, and you see this stellate, you know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Wednesday case. Uh, you see that it's a little bit. Yeah, an ulcerated nodule. It's, it's rather an ulcerated nodule, so yeah. And let's see the thermoscopy. If it can provide information which can guide us to the correct diagnosis. Uh -huh. Okay. And now here are our options. Wednesday case. Basal cell carcinoma. Why not? Squamous cell carcinoma. Why not? Seborrheic keratosis, if you are so optimistic, why not? Perforating dermatosis, if you are a little bit literal person. Uh, a, a little bit uh, poetic, you know, a little bit uh, a fancy guy. 
<laughs> Why not a, a, a syphilis, primary syphilis? Very nice. Femme oh, no, no, was the correct answer, voted by the majority. We have an ulcerated area, which of course is not specific for anything, but we also have follicular openings surrounded by white, follicular plugs surrounded by white color and dotted vessels at the periphery. So much more compatible with squamous cell, which keeps LEC uh, on the first place in the first place, Keja in the second, and we go to Thursday. Here we are. Eh? So poor little boy. Do you think that you already have enough for your diagnosis or you need more? More or less, more or less. I also think so. But in any yeah. case, you have more if you like. And here, there is a very, very simple question, which is, this is suspicious, true or false? <laughs> eh? Is this suspicious? Well, yeah, it depends what you mean with suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is for malignant false. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No way, no way. No Clinical way. And dermatoscopic. Reason what, this was a Lauge Unziker or what? Well, no, no. I mean, the, just macules on the macules on the on the lip. Okay. No lip, nothing else. So nothing yeah. else. Okay. Some kind of, of melanosis. And finally, Friday case is this uh, this one. Uh, clinically, dermatoscopically, okay? And here the question is again, true or false? Is it suspicious, true or false? Ah, quite interesting, eh? Ah. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting. Definitely, I know the result of the vote. You know, eh? Mm -hmm. It's pretty common in Turkey, this pattern. Yeah, it's very common, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, 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 but. Yeah, so the majority vote was false, but the correct answer is true that this is suspicious. Ah, so was it what? Melanoma. Really? 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 I don't no. believe it. No, no. Come it's on. a compound yeah. no. nevus. It looks like compound yeah, nevus. It's a combined nevus. Yes. 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 But I would have said to the patient, go. Goodbye, my guy, my friend. Of course, maybe you didn't pay so much attention. Oh, I didn't tell you the age, and you could not understand it by looking at the at the foot. But uh, it was quite advanced the age. Ah, how, how old was the patient? First of all, it was uh, I don't know. I mean, seventy something like this. Ah, okay. And uh, yeah, then also there are some some dots here at the periphery. There is this uh, black area in the center, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, but the age, of course, was very important. So this was a melanoma, and it was not inside. It was uh, zero. Of course, something. if this is a melanoma, it's invasive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was so certain it was a combined nevus. Yeah. Uh, eh, hey, but this was. Uh, Charlie's no, Charlie's uh, is the third place. Mikin and and and. Kezia. LEC, but we have to, Sebi, we have to put a very nice celebrating song in this moment. <laughs> 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 Elise, uh, I know who is LEC, if, uh, if, I, if I understood correctly, this is uh, Elisa which, by the way, was a winner again, but not recently, many, uh, many, many, many weeks ago. So this time, uh, uh, you are a winner with the prize. Uh, and the prize is the one we said uh, before. So uh, I don't know if we can, uh, if we have Elisa with us, just to congratulate her. Yeah, we do. Yes, yes. Here we are. Elisa. In the Elisa. meanwhile, uh, do we have anything else to say other than uh, thanking very much all the attendees for being here in this episode? Reminding that uh, on you, our YouTube channel, you can find the episodes, uh, this one and also the previous ones. And uh, yeah, see us 
next Sunday at 7. Elisa, do you want to show yourself so that we congratulate you on air and we say all together? Maybe there is a problem with the connection. Okay. Anyhow, so many congratulations. Very good. Very good. Ragazzi, thank you for, for your participation and see you next Sunday. Un bacione. Ευχαριστούμε. Night. Καλησπέρα. Τσέμπι. Καληνύχτα. Καληνύχτα. Μόνο σε ράτα. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.